Oh, now you see the situation. Carlotta has married Paul and ruined his life. And one by one, we see his friends cut him cold. And now, at last, Carlotta plans to make amends. Oh, but you told us that, Helen. I know, Mother, but you see, if you're not in the position of an audience seeing a play, you've got to get it sort of firmly set in your mind or else... Well, I can't get any reaction. That's right, Mother. Helen's got to have reactions. So now she's giving him this enormous party. When suddenly there's a ring at the doorbell. It's funny, it should ring this very minute. If that's Ted Palmer, I can't see him. Well, didn't you promise to go to the movies with him? Oh, I know, Mother, but tell him to come back later. This is perfectly awful. How can I create a move with all these interruptions? Oh, good evening, Mrs. Middleton. Good evening, Ted. Is Helen ready? Oh, she's reading us her new play. Again? Yes. Well, I'd better not come in just yet, had I? Oh, I'm afraid not. You know how mad she gets when she's interrupted. Well, what are we going to do, Mrs. Middleton? Well, you know, Ted, I've been depending a little bit on you. Well, I'm not having such good luck. <laughs> well, you come back in about five minutes. Oh, uh, is she at the part where the girl is going to stab herself with a poison dagger? No. She's just at the place where the doorbell rings. Mm. Well, uh, I'd better come back in ten minutes. <laughs> and then they made her into the room, and everybody stops and stares at her. And guess what she says? I don't have to guess. I know. Oh, Mother. Shh. Freddy. Then she slowly crumples to the floor. And just before she passes out... Drunk? Just before she faints, she manages to murmur, Mr. Smedley, your wife is dead. Yes. Uh, what did you say you're going to call this play? The end of everything. Well, what's your reaction? Well, of course I'm not. Oh, uh, did I interrupt you, my dear? I think it's very nice, Helen. Very nice indeed. Here you are, Freddy. I hope they'll hold pants, up another pants, week. Pants, 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 Mother, don't you realize I'm trying to talk about my play? Pants, pants, pants. pants. Mother, will you get him out of here? Helen, I will not be talked to in that way. Oh, well, what's the use of writing and struggling and trying to create when what I do is of less importance to my family than an old pair of pants? Now I've upset her again. Oh, I do wish she'd taken up domestic science. Well, Freddy, have you made up your mind what you're going to do when you grow up? I don't know. But I'm not going to write play. Stick to your guns, son. Stick to your guns. just as important for people to marry and settle down, maybe have a few kids, be happy, as it is for them to write plays. Well, maybe you're right, Ted. And maybe I'm right. But the only thing I can do is to keep on doing what I believe in. And there's no chance for me, hmm?
How are you, Mr. Avery? How are you, Henry? How are the ducks? Well, we told them you was coming, so they stay at home waiting up for you. <laughs> Mr. Avery, I'm from the Medbury Evening Chronicle. Yeah, well, just say that the stage has nothing to fear from pictures. Well, that's what you said last year. Well, I'd say that pictures have nothing to fear from the stage. Mr. Avery, we're the lecture committee of the Medbury Women's Club. Well, I'd just say that neither the stage nor pictures have anything to fear from television. How do you do, Mr. Avery? Nice to see you again. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. Here are uh, three telegrams, and uh, Mr. Jeffrey Crandall has been calling all afternoon from New York. Yeah, well, I'll take care of that later. <laughs> Mr. Avery, I'm the director of our local little theater group. We're putting on a very daring production. Uh, Mr. Avery, what are you planning? Mr. Avery, My friends, I've come to your charming little city not only to shoot ducks, but to recover from a very serious nervous ailment. I'm under the strictest orders of my psychologist, my neurologist, and my psychiatrist. And I'm ordered to have absolutely... Absolute quiet. Quiet, do you understand? <laughs> Forgive me for that little outburst, but you see, just before I left New York, I... I bit a man. Mr. Avery, I've written a play and I... Oh, don't say it, don't say it. Stay just where you are. You're in great danger. Look. Yes? Well, tell him I haven't arrived. Tell him I've gone to another hotel and you don't know where it is. Tell him... Oh, put him on. Listen, Jeff, I'm on my vacation. Why can't you leave me alone just for once? You know I wouldn't call you unless we were really in trouble. Well? Well, it's Charlotte. Only this time it's serious. You've got to come back. Well, I'm not coming back and you might just as well get used to the idea. Hey, wait a minute, will you? What do you want? Mr. Avery, I've just written a play and I was wondering if you'd read it. What do you mean by bursting in on me like this? I'm on my vacation. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, but you see, it's only the third act, and if you'll just promise me. Now, let me get this straight. You say you've written a play, but you've only brought me the third act to read. Well, where's the rest of it? Well, you see, the third act is the most powerful, and I thought it would give you a better idea of what I can do. When you write a play, you submit the whole thing, not just a part of it. You mean if I give you a complete script, you read it? Oh, send it to my New York office. Mr. Avery. If you like it, would you be sure to give it a good production? If I like it, it'll be a smash. Oh, oh thank you so much, Mr. Avery. Goodbye. Hello, Jeff. All right, go ahead. What's this about Charlotte Morley? She's going over to Max Hoffman. But I thought you had her under contract. Sure, I've got her under contract. But only for one more play. I built her up and up and up. And now, she says, when she's finished with the next play... He's going to Max Hoffman. Well, what do you expect me to do? I want you to come back and straighten her out. You know I can't do anything with Charlotte Morley. Well, if you can't, who can? You've worked with her for 15 years. Yeah, and I've fought with her for 15 years. I know, but look at the hole it puts us in. You'll be a director without a star. I'll be a producer without a star. We've been partners a long time, Don. This is a crisis. This is serious. Now, look here, Jeff. You gave me two weeks' vacation to shoot ducks. I haven't even seen a duck. I haven't shot a gun. Good I old Avery. I knew you'd do it. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. I'm checking out. Right away. But Charlotte, please tell me. What can Max Hoffman give you that I can't give you? Is it more money? No, dear. Is it more publicity? No, dear. Is it bigger billing? No, dear. No. Then what is it? Oh, Jeffrey, darling. It's something you couldn't possibly understand. All right. Then talk to Don. His mind is fresh. He's just back from a long vacation. All I can tell you is this. For the last two years, I've had the feeling no 
It's a conviction. Nothing personal, Jeffrey, darling. I shall always adore you. But a conviction that under your management, Jeff, dear, I have no more chance for growth. And what is an artist without growth? Do you know what she's talking about? I wasn't listening. He never listens. If you want the truth, the reason I'm quitting you is on account of him. Everything he tells you is law. Well, not for me. I'm sick of being his slave. I want to pick my own plays. I want something to say about my cast. I want to choose my own director. I'm tired of carrying Don. Tired of carrying me? Ha <laughs> ha, that's wonderful. Why, if it weren't for me and my direction, you'd still be doing recitations of the latest age. Shut up! Shut up! Now I'm beginning to understand something. Will Max Hoffman let you pick your own plays and cast? Mm-hmm. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Now we've got something to talk about, haven't we, now? Not me, Jeff. If Charlotte takes charge, I quit. Quit? Why, you rat. Exactly. And that's why I'm deserting this sinking ship. Mr. Avery, will you be good enough to explain that statement? I wish I could, but no, I can't. I love you too much, darling. Don, you can't do this to me. We're two good friends. Please, Charlotte, after all we've gone through together... That has a great deal to do with my leaving you, Jeff. So you're going. Let me know when you get a script for our last show together. Listen, let me tell you how I feel about you. You can take all the rope you want. All I ask, let me know when you're going to hang yourself. I want to be there. That would be the second hanging you witnessed. Remember your brother? I'm through with her forever. Never, never, never will she come to this office again. Well, uh, not unless I absolutely have to have her. What about her next play? The last that our happy little trio will do together. I wouldn't have her another play if she was the last actress in the world. Better sue me. Better go to Max Hartman. Now. Forever. Uh, wait. I've got an idea. It's going to cost me money. Yeah. But to get even with her... I'd even use my own money. Jeff, how much of your own money have you got? I say confidentially between friends. Oh, this will only cost $500. Have you got $500? Do you think if I had any real money, I'd be worrying about Charlotte Molly? No. But we've had a bad season, Don. That's why I've got to try and keep that dizzy dame. She's crazy as a loon, but she's still the biggest draw on Broadway. And brother... She's our last asset. If she leaves us, we're finished. Broke. Yeah, I know that. What's your big idea? Wait and see. Miss Smith. Come in here right away. I've got a little plan that will make Miss Charlotte Morley get down on her knees and beg us to sign a new contract. Yes? Yes. Good morning, beautiful. Have any bad plays come in? Through these portals pass the most terrible plays in the world. Yes, and you recommend most of them. I repeat, have you got any bad ones there? Any what? Bad, 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 dirty, rotten. Do I make myself perfectly clear? Well, I've just finished reading something so bad I've either got to laugh or go crazy. That's fine, bring it in. You... I thought you bought enough bad plays last season to carry us for 12 years. What do you want with another one? Just leave it to old Jeff Crandall. He's beginning to click. Mr. Crandall, is this a joke? Look at me. Am I laughing? Is that it? That's it. Is it bad? <laughs> read it and say. Since when do I read scripts? Just tell me about it. Well, the first act is divided into two scenes. Scene one, a small town. A boy named Paul is desperately in love with a girl named Carlotta. They're too poor to get married, so they're separating. Yes, yes, go on, go on. She's going to Big City to take a job, and he's staying home to work on his, uh, invention. <clears throat> I didn't ask you to recite the story. Just tell me how it ends. Well, the third act, Colada's married Paul and completely ruined his life. All his friends hate her. They're right, too. So she gives a great big party to celebrate their third wedding anniversary, invites all her enemies. The height of the river, she goes out and shoots herself. Curtain. Tragedy, huh? 
in more ways than one. How does it sound to you? Well, if you're looking for a bad play, that's your baby, but I still don't understand. Let me do the understanding for a change. Send a copy of that to Charlotte Morley. Tell her that's our next show. Look, Mr. Crandall, there are a lot of ways to commit suicide. Poison, gas, shooting, drowning. Why do you have to do it in anything so public as a play? I don't mind insubordination, Miss Smith, as long as you're courteous about it. <laughs> Who wrote the play? Oh, I don't know. Somebody by the name of Helen Middleton. That's fine. Send her the regular contract and a check for $500. Tell her we're going to produce it immediately. Well, I don't know about you, Mr. Avery, but I'm certainly going to pay a lot more attention to the help-wanted column from now on up. Would you please be so good as to make it a check to our new author? Jeff, would you please be good enough to tell me what this is all about? With pleasure. You don't sound as though you meant that. I think it's wonderful. It's, it's all my dreams come true. Ted, I'm a playwright. Can you imagine that? No, I can't. Oh, gosh, Helen, I, I remember when you used to wear pigtails and those little short skirts. Uh, even then, I guess I had the idea that maybe someday we'd be married. Kind of silly, isn't it? No, it isn't silly, Ted. It's just that things have worked out so that it's impossible. Even with my new territory, it would take me two and a half months to earn $500. So you feel that way about it? Well, it's, it's not that I'm envious of you, Helen. It's, well, it's just that I think you're making a mistake. Why do you say that? Well, because in any line of business I ever heard of, you've got to have some experience to be successful. If you were I, which would you take? The opinion of a famous New York producer or that of a wholesale grocery salesman? Well, it must be pretty tough to stand out here and talk to a wholesale grocery salesman. Good night. Go on, and I'm glad I found out about you before I really came to like you. And you do like me a little, don't you? I guess I'm fond of you than any boy I've ever met. No, and I'm, I'm glad you're going to have a chance to do what you wanted to do. I may not have sounded like it, but I hope you have good luck. Did you send Charlotte the script? Last night. And along with it, I sent a little letter which read approximately as follows. My dear Miss Charlotte Morley, exercising clause 14 of our contract with you, I'm enclosing the script of your new play entitled The End of Everything. You will report for rehearsals at 10 o'clock on the morning of October the 10th. That's day after tomorrow. How's that? Great. We should hear from her today. Any hour, any minute. I can just hear her scream. You read the play, didn't you? It's the most unspeakable atrocity that has ever been perpetrated in the history of the American theater. It stinks. That's good. That's very good. I can't wait to see her face. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Jeff, I want to wake off. I got to go take the killer. When a guy starts seeing things like I saw in there last night, that... That's a hangover on paper. Wait a minute. I'm going to do this play with Charlotte Morley. From you, I ask no opinions. All I ask is publicity. And for this show, I don't even want publicity. Just a thick silence. Even silence would be overselling it. Don, has Charlotte seen this thing? You're waiting to hear from her now. She'll never do it. She's got to. It's in her contract. Even with her ten-year-old mentality, she'll never do it in a million years. Fine. Fine? Certainly. If she doesn't do this show, it'll be a million years before she does another. You mean, uh, we're all going to get out of show business? <laughs> Sit down. Don, you explain it to her. Spike, this play is so bad that if I were to direct it, it would mean the end of my career. Yes, I can see that pretty plain. And if I were to produce such an unspeakable piece of tripe, I'd never do another show. I'd be cleaned out, washed up. I got that part, too. But I still can't see why you have... We have Charlotte Morley under contract for one more play. 
But she tells me she's going to sign with Max Hoffman after she completes her contract with us. And, my dear little friend, if we lose our star, that means the end of the firm of Crandall and Avery. So we picked the worst play anybody ever thought of writing. And we sent it to Charlotte with a notice that it would be her next show. And remember, she's got to do one more play with us before she can sign with Max Hoffman. So what happens? We know the play will ruin her. So maybe in five minutes, maybe in an hour, she's going to come here. Wait a minute, I'm getting it. In fact, I've got it. She's going to whimper. <laughs> and crawl. And howl like a dog. And yell for mercy. In fact, it's going to be so pitiful, I won't be able to stand it. And she's going to beg us to call it off, and we'll do it. But only after she's signed with us for another five years. And how do you like that? Gentlemen, I bow to true genius. Hey, wait a minute. Suppose she says she wants to do the play. Oh, ridiculous. Nonsense. You'll do anything on earth to get out of it. Yes? Miss Middleton to see you, sir. Who is Miss Middleton? She's the author of the play. What play? End of Everything. Uh, do I have to see her? Go ahead, Jeff. I got a morbid curiosity. All right, send her in. Don, wait. You can't leave me now. What do you expect me to do? Stay around here and tell the dame what a great play she's written? I don't want to see her now or ever. I happen to heart. Miss Middleton, I'm Jeff Crandall. How do you do? How do you do? Spike Malone, our press agent. How do you do? Mr. Avery. All night long on the train, I was sort of rehearsing what I was going to say to you. Now that I'm here, I, I can just say thank you. Thank me? What for? For everything. For inspiration and for giving me the courage to go on when I needed it most. And for persuading you to produce my play. What on earth are you talking about? That evening in your hotel room. You must remember, I'll never forget it. Oh, why, yes, of course. Are you, he, he, he persuaded me to produce your play? Well, what I mean is I'm sure that his enthusiasm must have helped. Yes, I'm sure it must have. In fact, you should have heard him. Oh, isn't it wonderful? I'm really here in your office. You know, this morning when I got off the train at the station, it, it almost seemed like I could, I could hear trumpets. When you hear them, it's bad. Yes? Miss Morley's here. Morley here? Oh, my. Don't uh, walk, boys. Run. Charlotte Morley? Uh, ask her to wait, please. Miss Middleton, uh, I think it would be best if, if you excuse us. I don't think you'd better hear what oh. she says. I, I, I mean... Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, what, what, Angel! What's happened? The play, darling. The play. You mean the play? Your play. Our play. My play. You, uh, like it? Like it? Oh, Jeff. You, you mean you like it? Marvelous. Have you read it? Well, only my part, but then that's, that's the whole play because I'm on practically every page. Oh, that final scene. If that doesn't tear their hearts out, why, I don't know what a play is. Yes. yes. I've been thinking over the Hoffman proposition. Let's get together, you and Don and I, and discuss it calmly. Jeff, for this, I forgive you everything. Everything. Charlotte, I want you to meet your new author, Miss Morley, Miss Middleton. Child, you wrote this play. Yes. My dear, it's the most, the most, you tell her, Don. I'm too unstrung to find the right adjective. Extraordinary. That's the word. Don't you think so, Jeff, darling? Well, it's uh, certainly different. Child, you frighten me. Where did you learn so much about the human soul? My dear, you've written the most beautiful play. Here and there, some of the scenes need a few more words for me and things like that. But that would be simple. What do you think of getting Cary Grant from Hollywood for my leading man? What's the matter? Nothing, just happiness, I... I guess. That girl is a genius. There's been nothing like it in the theater for years. There's just been nothing like it. Jeff, Don, we're going to make this into the biggest hit we've ever had. Sit down, Charlotte. Oh, I can't. I'm fairly vibrating with this wonderful play. 
The thing is, Charlotte, you see, we've, uh, well, as a matter of fact, we found a much better play. So I'm afraid we'll have to call this one off. Isn't that right, Don? Oh, yes, it is indeed. I won't hear of it. I'll have nothing to do with it. This play was made for me. I thrill to it. Please, Charlotte. Everything's been changed. We're not going to do this play. You evidently forget that I had a lawyer draw up my contract with you, Jeff Crandall. When you exercised Clause 14, and you did exercise Clause 14, the play goes on, or you hand me $50,000. This play is a work of art. I'll see you gentlemen day after tomorrow at 10 a.m. And you'd better be ready to start rehearsals or give me a check for $50,000. Goodbye. Well, that was a swell idea you had, wasn't it? I had. Why? Well, it's your job to keep us out of messes like this. What are we going to do? We're ruined. It'll cost us 30000 to open. It'll cost us 50000 if we don't. Have we any, though? Gentlemen, we've got to put this play on. We've got to mortgage everything we have. Oh, why didn't I let that double-crossing game go to Max Hoffman? I don't feel very well. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. Well, I hope it's better than the last one you had. I'm going to make this a good play if you have to rewrite the whole thing. Nobody's going to say Jeff Crandall took a beating lying down. Go on. You're going to see that girl and get her consent to make any changes in this play we want. Suppose she won't give her consent. She's just a little girl from the sticks. She admires you. She'd be delighted to give her consent. And if she don't, I'll crush her skull. Some caviar, my dear? Quite a lot of caviar? Oh, not at all. But isn't it terribly expensive? Terribly. But the best is none too good for you, my dear. Thank you. You've just taken a dollar and a quarter's worth. It's awfully good, isn't it? We don't have anything like this in Medbury. You have something in Medbury which is far more important, my dear. What? Beauty. And talent. Oh, Mr. Avery, do you really think I... Call me Don. Oh, thank you, Don. You were mentioning something about talent. Do you really think I have talent? Great talent, my dear. Your play is one of the most uh, astounding things I've ever encountered in all my life. <laughs> well, that reminds me of something I hope you'll understand. What is it? Well, whenever a play is submitted, a certain amount of doctoring is necessary. I hope you won't mind if I make just a few minor changes. Not at all, mister. I mean, Don. You see, it would be sort of silly for a person as new as I am in the theater to object if a director like you wanted to help my script out, wouldn't it? <laughs> Possibly. I have your consent, then? Oh, Don, you not only have my consent, you have my thanks. Excellent. <laughs> Shall we go now? So soon? Yes, you see, I have a lot of work to do tonight. I'm sure you won't mind, will you? No, I don't mind. And let me tell you finally, Don Avery, that you'll never get away with it. You've taken something lovely, a bit of pure art, and dirted it up with your filthy commercial mind. I'll not tolerate these changes, and I'll... Right in here. Miss Morley, Miss Middleton is here. I'll, uh, I'll talk it over with you later. Yes. Yeah. Goodbye. My dear child, please come in. Do sit down. Thank you. Have you had breakfast? Yes, I was just finishing the call you. Good. Now tell me, what on earth made you put these changes in the script? I didn't make any changes. I just told Don, I mean Mr. Avery, that... Well, you see, he wanted to shift the emphasis a little bit. 
shifts the emphasis. Do you know what he's done? He's delayed my entrance until page nine. And look at this. Three other speeches besides mine on the same page. Why, it's monstrous. Well, I, I didn't know he was going to do all that. Well, he has. He's done that and worse. People are always entering or exiting right in the middle of my biggest scenes. Darling, is this your first experience in the theater? Yes. Would you mind taking advice from a person who has suffered for her art? No, not at all. Good. In the first place, I want to tell you that I've starred on Broadway for 12 years, and I've never seen a more beautifully written play than yours. You mustn't allow them to change a single line, not a syllable. But how can I stop them? If you look carefully, in your contract, there's a clause which forbids the producer or anyone else from changing a single line in the play without the author's consent. Oh, really? Certainly. Now, what you've got to do is to fight for what you've produced. If it was worth writing, it's worth saving. You've got to fight for it as you would for your very soul. Well, I know, Miss Morley, but you see, Don said that... Now, let me tell you something about Don. He's a frustrated writer. All of his life, he's hated himself because he wasn't able to write. So he tampers with everything he can get his hands on. He debases it. Well, I never realized that. Well, well, what can I do about it? Go down to the office immediately and absolutely forbid them to change a single line. You're perfectly within your right. Well, I'll go down right now and I'll tell them it must absolutely stay as I wrote it. But, Helen, last night you told me that I'm every... I'm sorry, Don, I cannot allow you to tamper with my play. Tamper? Why, you... Well, who put the idea into your head? Nobody. It's just that an artist must stand up for herself or become degraded. Miss Middleton, what's wrong with the changes? Well, Miss Molly doesn't make her entrance until page nine. And then on another page there are three other speeches besides hers. And then people are always entering or exiting in her biggest scenes. Yeah, I think I know who told you that. Miss Middleton, we won't stand for any nonsense. I'm spending $30,000 to produce your play. And I'll be hanged if I don't make what changes I want. Mr. Crandall, I'm sorry, but I have a contract. And if the play was worth writing, it's worth fighting for. And I've got to do it. Helen, darling, don't you trust us? Well, Don, it's not that I don't trust you. It's just that you represent the commercial side of the theater and I represent the artist. Besides, all you people seem to think about is money. And money isn't important. To think that I should live to see the day when money isn't important. Well, it isn't. I've got to fight for my integrity. I'm sorry, Mr. Crandall, but I must stand on the rights given me in my contract. Goodbye, Don. Goodbye, Mr. Crandall. Maybe she'll get run over in a traffic accident. Maybe she'll fall off a very tall building. And if she doesn't, we've got to call off this play. And pay Charlotte Molly $50,000 for nothing? Never. I can't. I haven't got it. The girl's within her rights and Charlotte's within hers. We're licked. Wait a minute. What's the matter? I've been thinking. I always feel uncomfortable when you think. How old are you, Don? 38. Hmm. Profile's not bad. Still have your own teeth. You're not such a terrible looking guy, Don. Well, who said I was? Don, you've been a man about town for the last 15 years. Remember when Lorette LaRue chased you clear to Bermuda? Oh, ho, ho, ho. you were quite a boy then, Don. Oh, I was not. Oh, yes, you were. No, I was not. Yes, you were. I was not. Stop it! No actress in New York could say she'd ever really lived unless she'd been engaged to you at least once. What's the idea? Well, she's old enough to be a father, but then she might have a complex. What are you talking about? Well, if this little dame, uh, what's her name? Uh, Middleton. Now, if she were to fall in love with you... Oh, you're crazy. You've got glamour, Don. I'm just beginning to see it. I haven't got any glamour, and I won't... Of course, the chassis is a little old. But I've a hunch you've got a young heart. Jeff, I hate little girls. I hate the way they talk. And I hate to direct bad plays. You're going to make that dame fall in love with you. 
And then you're going to get permission to change this rotten play any way you want. Crandall, you and I have been through an awful lot together. But I won't... You're going to sweep this child off her feet. Nightclubs. Soft lights. Soft music. The smell of gardenias. And your voice. Throbbing in her ear. And you're going to begin tonight. <laughs> Do you think so? I thought I'd been stepping on your toes all evening. Oh, no, you haven't. You know, I've often dreamed of a night like this. A place like this with someone like you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for your pleasure, a rumba. A rumba? Oh, I love to rumba, don't you? Uh, why, yes, of course, but couldn't we go back to the table and have a drink? All right, I'm sure they'll play another one. Yes, I'm sure they will. A double brandy. Yes, sir. Will you have something, Helen? A hot chocolate. Yes, ma'am. Isn't this exciting? Wonderful. Well, well, well. Imagine finding my writer and my director here. Good evening, Mr. Crandall. Hello. Hello. Having a nice time? Oh, we're having a wonderful time. You're doing any dancing, Don? Anything wrong, Don? No. Nothing that can be helped, Jeff. Well, I thought perhaps uh, I'll rumber, if you will. You don't mind, Mr. Crandall? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm a little old, but Don loves to dance. Good night, Jeff. Um, wouldn't you like to go out on the balcony and have a look at the view? Couldn't we see it later? Well, now's the best time if you really want to see the view. Uh, all right. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. It's the most beautiful sight I've ever seen. Yes, isn't it? Doesn't it make you think of all the dreams you used to dream? Eh? Oh, yes, 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 indeed it does. Am I boring you? Huh? Why, no, of course you're not. Just to prove that you're not boring me. Oh, Don. You see that out there? Yes. Pittsburgh, New York. I've never really understood it until now. Why? I've never seen it before. With you. Oh, Don, that's a lovely thing to say. But it's true. We are going to take that town in our stride. We're going to make every dream we've ever had come true. Everyone. Are we? Don. Yes, dear? Before you became interested in the commercial theater, in money, didn't you have ideals? No. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, about what? About your work. Oh, but my dear child, I learned long ago that ideals never pan out. Somewhere along the line, one is forced to compromise. And that's why I've been thinking of again, asking you if I might make just a few changes in that lovely play of yours. Do you really want to, darling? Darling, I've never wanted to change anything so much in all my life. No, no, I, I simply can't let you change it. Why? Because of what you've just said. What did I just say? About your ideals and how you've had to compromise them. What on earth has that got to do with it? Well, now I must... I must guard your ideals. I'm not going to let you change one word of my play because of you and all the ideals you've had to compromise. This is one dream that will come true. You mean the play? As is? Yes. You... You'll thank me for it someday, Don. Should we dance? No. Yeah, yes, yes, I'd love to. Uh, 
Um, you know, I've got an idea. This place is much too sedate for a couple of young folks like you. Why don't you run over to the Kit Kat Club? You know, go up and see Harlem. Really do the town. <laughs> no, uh, Helen's much too tired, aren't you? No, I'm not at all. I'd love to go. I've never hated anybody in all my life as much as I've hated that little country girl. I can't stand it. Look at the hollows under my eyes. Well, can I help it if you've dissipated away your youth? I've taken her everywhere. I've danced until my feet feel like two raw nerves. I've eaten midnight snacks until my stomach howls when a head waiter even nods at me. Chinatown, Little Italy, Hell's Kitchen, the Bronx. And last night, she made me stay up to see the sunrise over the aquarium. You've got to get a better approach. Oh, it's impossible. Everything's fine until I mention that confounded play of hers. Then she's like a two-year-old with an all-day sucker. Whoever said it was a cinch to take candy away from babies is nuts. You know, these little country girls don't think like we do, Jeff. Don't give her a chance to think. You make love like a snail. Now, don't forget, I've watched you. Jeff, I'm an old man. I've seen four, 38 summers and 38 winters. My face is towards the setting sun. And I'm not going to die on a dance floor. Maybe you'd rather die in the poorhouse. Did you ever think of telling her that you loved her? <laughs> Tell her that I love her. That's how I say good morning over the telephone. Jeff, I've talked baby talk to her so much that I'm beginning to lift. Well, maybe the dame is more intelligent than you think she is. Maybe she doesn't like baby talk. Then why doesn't she tell me so? Maybe she's giving you a chance to get wise to yourself. I've got a hunch you've been using the wrong tactics. Maybe she likes building campfires. You know, wholesome things. Try that for a change. I can't stand anything more wholesome than a dry martini. And you know it, Jeff. I never get home till five or six in the morning. And at ten o'clock I have to be down to the theater rehearsing. No sleep. The human constitution can't stand it. And you know what she wanted to do at 8 o'clock this morning? No, what? She wanted to go horseback riding in Central Park. Oh, well, she did, huh? Now, listen, Jeff, you can't do that to me. Smith! Oh, Smith! Yes. Uh, call up the zoo or something and reserve two horses for Central Park for tomorrow morning. For Miss Middleton and Mr. Avery. Tell them you want the biggest horses they've got. Yes, sir. Whoa! Whoa! Hey, Helen. Won't you let me just change the thick of that curtain? Don, the play's been in a rehearsal for a week. You can't change it now. Uh, I could if you'd only let me. Don, just because we're going together, there's no reason why I should surrender my personality to you. After all, you lose respect for me. Respect? Joyce! Sally Ho! Oh, oh, hello! <laughs> good morning, Mr. Crandall. I didn't know you rose. Oh, good morning. I never miss my morning canter, you know, Mr. Middleton. Uh, how are you this morning, Don? Okay. Uh, you remember that little matter we were discussing last evening? Anything happened yet? No. Uh, well, uh, keep working on it. It's important, you know. Well, what do you think I'm doing? Uh, see you later, Miss Middleton. Goodbye. <laughs> remember, Don. Uh, I'll race to the lake. Oh. Oh, Mr. Avery. Oh, Mr. Avery. Oh, come oh, on, Mr. Avery, wake uh, up. Oh, oh. I'm the masseur. I don't want to masseur. I'm tired. I just want to sleep. I'm sorry, but Mr. Crandall says you've been late to rehearsal. He said I should get you up. Now, don't give me any trouble, Mr. Avery, because I got a headache. I'll stand up there. I'll stay right there like it things ready. I'll stay there. I don't want a massage, and you can't make me. Oh, you're not going to have a massage, I huh? I want to sleep. 
Oh, oh, so you want to play, huh? Oh, you want to play, huh? No. Oh, he wants to play. Oh. 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 O
Don, I don't understand. Oh, you don't understand. You never did and you never will. You're the type that'll never understand anything. Don, you can't talk to her like that. Oh, I can't, can't I? She's lucky I didn't break her neck. Don, I didn't know you felt that way about it. Careful, Don, careful. Why did you do it? I'll tell you why I did it. You wrote the worst piece of junk that's ever been put on paper, and you came here gushing about art. Why, there's more art on the tip of my little finger than there is in your whole family tree. And yet you think, you think that this piece of junk is so wonderful that nobody dare touch a line. Not a syllable, not a piece of it. Well, I tell you something, I'm through with you forever. And you, and you, and you especially. Well, I'm certainly going to know the way you feel about it. Now I understand why you've been taking me out and being so nice to me. You've just wanted my consent to change the play. You don't know what it means to be decent or honest. You don't care if you deceive people into thinking anything you want them to think. Well, I'm going to tell you something. The whole bunch of you, I'm going away from here. And you'll never be able to find me. And nobody's going to change a single line of my play. Goodbye. Well, now you've done it. You used to be a director. I used to be a producer. Now what are we? We are men. We can call the whole thing off. And <laughs> pay me $50,000. Oh, oh, you couldn't possibly do that. It's not that. Why was I born? Why was I ever born? If I say something. Yes, I do. I want peace and quiet and a nice soft bed. Now, listen, shall we? You don't know the meaning. Yes, I do. In all of our author's contracts, we have a clause which states that, quote, in the event the author is unavailable to the producer, the producer is empowered to make any changes in the play he may see fit, end of quote. That's right. It's right, Don. We are saved, Jeff. I'm going to start rewriting this play. I'm starting with page one and ending up with the last act, and nobody will recognize this stinker when I get through. Not even you. You wouldn't dare. You can't do this. It's monstrous. Helen. Helen, <laughs> darling. <laughs> Smithy, oh, you saved the day. Smithy. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Masterson, I'll have some rent money for you tomorrow. But, my dear, it's been five weeks now, if the place were my own. Well, you see, my play's open tonight, and I'll have a lot of money right away. Well, I don't know what to say. I got my orders to ask you to leave or pay up the rent myself. I can't afford that. Well, you're not running any risk, Mrs. Masters. You don't seem to realize how much money you can make out of just one play. Sometimes they flop. Oh, but this one won't. And even if it does, I've written another one, and I can easily get $500 for it. Well, I'll come up again tomorrow. Maybe something will happen by then. One thing bothers me. I never see you go out for your lunch or your dinner. Well, you see, I like to do my cooking in here because... Well, that way I don't ever have to leave my work. You are getting enough to eat, then. Oh, yes, the cupboard is filled with canned food. Oh, I'm glad of that. See you tomorrow. Good luck. Thank you so much, Miss Masterson. Good night. Good night. Oh, oh, Ted. How did you know where I was? Well, your mother told me. Mind if I come in? No, not at all. Now, what's this about you not going out for your meals, young lady? Well, I just like to do my own cooking, that's all. Why didn't you tell somebody? It's nobody's business. I know, honey, but what use are friends if you can't come to them when you're down on your luck? I'm not down on my luck, Ted. My play's opening tonight, and I'm going to make a lot of money. And besides, I've just written another one. And anyhow, I like it here. You actually mean to say you're going to keep this up? Well, why not? I don't know. I suppose you've got to do what you think best, but this isn't your kind of life, Helen. The people you meet in the theater, they aren't your kind of people. I'm sorry, Ted. I've made up my mind. I'd rather not talk about it. Will you let me take you to the opening tonight? I'm not going. Why? I had a quarrel. With Mr. Avery? With everybody. You're not going to let them frighten you out of seeing your opening night, are you? I'm sorry, Ted. I'm not going. But, Helen, it's the thing you've been dreaming about for years. You can't miss it.
please go with me, won't you? All right, I will. And I'm going to take my next play. I'm not going to let them or anybody else lick me. I hope you don't mind tragic plays because this one's very sad. <laughs> yes, I remember. You know, if they do it well, there won't be a dry eye in the house. Ah, oh, don't you worry, darling. Gosh, I'm, I'm nervous. <laughs> May I see your tickets, please? Has the curtain gone up yet? Yes, miss, five minutes ago. <laughs> Thank you. This way, please. Oh, Ted, they're laughing. Those people have ruined my play. I'm going backstage and see them. It was the greatest triumph of your life. Thank you very much. It proves dear. that you can do comedy just as well as tragedy. Oh, well, that's so sweet of you. I know you'll excuse me now. I'm terribly tired. Oh. Good night. Good night. Congratulations, Mrs. Blaine. Thank you. All the best in the day. Thank you. Come here and tell me. Well, hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Tom, darling. Good night. I tell you, it would be great. Didn't I say it would be the finest thing we'd ever do? Yes. Oh, hello, Don. Mm -hmm. Well, hello. A great piece of direction, old fellow. Congratulations. Your direction is made of first lady of the theater. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, too. Thank you very much. Now, I tell you what I think, Avery. What I'm going to put in my review in the morning. You're the only man in the world that could have gotten a performance like that out of Morley. Oh, you <laughs> muddle-brained little hack. You ought to be selling typewriters instead of using them. I played comedy long before I ever met Don Avery. Yes, but how you played comedy, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Very much better than at present, I dare say. There was a little nuance to my work then. Yes, there was a little of that left over in your performance this evening. The nuance of a burlesque queen. And I might add that you have about as much gratitude as a water moccasin. Gratitude? You aborigine. What should I be grateful to you for? Well, I'll tell you. This play that you like so well was probably the worst piece of tripe in the history of the American theater. But of course, darling, you loved it. I saved you by rewriting the confounded thing and turning it from a horrible tragedy into a good farce. But you have so much ham in your nature that you gave what was probably the best performance of your entire life. You butcher. How dare you call Miss Molly a, a ham? She's the greatest actress in the world. You see this? That's my next play. And you're not going to get it. What do you think of that? Listen, Helen. I don't want to say a lot of words that both of us will be sorry for. You did write a very bad play, and I made it into a commercial success for you. It may not be art, but it will bring you in many thousands of dollars before it closes at the box office. It really was a very bad play, darling. But I took this very bad play, and with an extremely bad actress, I turned it into a very big success. You liar! You thief! Oh. You cat! Oh. You swine! No, you no, get no, out no, of no, here! Stop. You stop. Come on, honey, let's get out of here. These people are crazy. Yes. Why, it's all right. Right. Okay. I told you. I told you. Which way do we go? Over there. Well, so this is the theater, hmm? Mm-hmm. And that's New York. You know, I really never understood it until just now. But I've learned a lot from it. A lot of things you've always known. Helen, if, if you think you could ever learn to... Learn to love you. Mm-hmm. Oh, Ted, I think I always have. I wish you'd kiss me. Charlotte, aren't you very happy? Hasn't everything been wonderful? Where is he? Where is who? Don, the genius, the wonder boy. Where is he? There. Hmm? 
Don, Don, what's happened? The end of everything. <laughs> 